catching up with God. It's been said that mission is finding out what God is doing and joining in. The problem is that we can so easily disregard that. We can find ourselves working for a kingdom of our own imagining rather than the kingdom of God. We can forget that we are not supposed to be wise in our own sight. Hannah Steele, in the second chapter of our Lent book this year, asks if we have ever had the experience of God getting there before us. Let me give you an example from my own ministry. When I was an associate vicar in South East London, I became aware through the local media and through chatting to parishioners that there was an increasing amount of antisocial behaviour in one of the parishes focused around one particular estate. I distinctly remember praying one day as I was walking along a street in that parish that God would show me how I might respond to this issue and to the increasing gang-related violence in the area and how I might reach out to the young people who'd been made subject to antisocial behaviour orders. I had no plan. I knew nobody who lived on the estate in question. I knew none of the young people who were involved in the escalating situation. Then a couple of weeks later, completely out of the blue, I had a phone call from somebody who worked for the local council. They told me that they, along with the police, had been engaged with some young people subject to ASBOs in the area and that the young people wanted to ask me if they might use our church hall to hang out in. So this person at the council had looked up the church online and found my number. Well, I took it to the PCC and bless them, they were just worried about the old wooden hut that functioned at our hall and whether or not it would be safe enough. The wardens replaced some rotten timbers in the floor and laid some new lino and we took delivery of the equipment for table tennis and table football and pool and liberated a cupboard to store the snacks for the tuck shop. And from then on, my Monday nights were spent alongside a couple of parents of these young people supervising a youth club. Now, I don't think for a moment that my prayer brought the issue of the safety and well-being of the young people to God's attention. I honestly believe that God had got there first. I wasn't the one taking the initiative. That was God who loved these young men and women, who heard the cries of their anxious mothers, saw the fear in the eyes of their neighbours and knew the dangerous paths they had embarked on. All our church did was to respond. I can put on my CV that I helped set up a youth club or a crime prevention project, but we all know this had very little to do with me. This was God's work. I was just getting with the programme. Which shouldn't be a surprise, really. If we look at our Hebrew scriptures or in our Gospels and the Book of Acts, we will see time and time again God taking the initiative. The only real question is how we will respond, perhaps with the obedient yes of the Virgin Mary, or more often with the reluctance of Moses, or by running away and arguing like Jonah. Of course, like the first disciples of Jesus, we will all sometimes fail and sometimes fall short. But being a follower of Christ is inevitably about following and not about going off where we want and doing whatever takes our fancy or seems like a brilliant idea at the time. The fantastic news, of course, is that when working for the kingdom of God, we don't have to initiate a million fantastic projects before breakfast, but we do have to pray, to listen, to discern and to obey. We do have to allow our stories to be intertwined with his story, to enter into it, to find out what God is doing and to join in. 
So let us pray. Draw your church together, O God, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving in your mission to the world, and together witnessing to your love. Amen.